Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. In this one, I'll show you how to use parallax occlusion mapping, which is a special technique for bump map textures to have a lot of depth. You might be able to make this work in other render engines if they support OSL, but I'll be demonstrating in Redshift. First of all, what even is parallax occlusion mapping? Well, it's a type of shader effect that gives the appearance of self-occlusion or depth to a surface. We can see in this demo of the brick and plaster material, the effect is quite awesome since it doesn't require additional geometry like displacement does to match this effect. To make sure this works, we need a texture that includes a height or displacement map. I'm going to hop over to Megascans and find a nice brick wall example. Once I find one I like, I'll download it and send it over to Cinema 4D. With our render view running and texture tag scaled appropriately, we can create an OSL node. And if you aren't familiar with OSL, that's all right. We really just need to know that this stuff is super powerful because they're shaders made with code and we can find them on the internet. Now don't worry, I don't know any coding languages whatsoever. We just need to be able to copy and paste, which I think we can manage in this tutorial. To find the code we need, all we need to do is search for the Redshift OSL repository, which is on GitHub. Now this list could be daunting, but all we have to do is scroll down to the parallax occlusion mapping.osl and we just simply highlight and then copy this text. Flipping back to Redshift and with it selected, we can see it comes with some code, but we can delete that. Then paste in the parallax occlusion code and hit compile. Once compiled, we see the node's interface change and we see the parameters. Side note, if you're applying this to a curved surface, you want to create a state node and connect its tangent output to the tangent input on the parallax occlusion node. Now on the parallax occlusion node, we see a text field. This is where we load the height or displacement map that comes with our texture set. Behind the scenes, the node is using some fancy math along with the color information from our texture to essentially offset the UV coordinates of the other textures. But it does this relative to the camera angle, which is what's so cool. Speaking of offsets, let's connect the OSL node's output to the texture offset input on the other image textures for our material. And that's it. We can see the effect once we raise the depth and move our camera around. Be aware there are some downsides or caveats to be aware of. Cranking the depth up too high may result in some stretching, so be careful depending on the exact texture you're using. And on the far ends of a surface, like where this wall and metal panel come together, we can start to see some potential texture swimming if we move our camera around. This gets more apparent with higher depth, so be careful if you're animating a camera. There's a strategy I have for minimizing some of this texture swimming. Over in Photoshop, I have my displacement texture loaded, and I'm using a levels effect to clamp the top and bottom ends, also adjusting the midpoint slightly. Brighter areas appear to get shifted forwards, while darker areas appear to go backwards. So give this a shot if you run into the texture swimming issue. We can save this image and load it back into the OSL node to see what happens. Using the adjusted levels displacement texture and a depth of 5 on this particular brick material, we can see a great improvement. Keeping a close eye over here on the right edge, you can still see a small amount of texture swimming, but it's not too apparent, so chances are, in a camera animation, you won't see it. So that's everything you need to get up to speed on using the parallax occlusion mapping in Redshift. I'll definitely be covering more OSL nodes soon since there are so many useful ones. In the meantime, if you want to explore more of them on the Redshift OSL repo, you usually will see an accompanying JPEG. Scroll over to the side, and you'll see a screenshot of the node setup required to get you started. This OSL stuff might be intimidating, but don't worry, you don't really need to know how it works under the hood to still be able to take advantage of it. And that'll cover everything for this quick tip on parallax occlusion mapping. If you found this useful, please consider sharing or subscribing. And thank you so much for watching.